But something strikes you when you move to America and when you travel around the world. Every education system on Earth has the same hierarchy of subjects. Everyone, doesn't matter where you go, you think it would be otherwise, but it isn't. At the top are mathematics and languages, then the humanities, and the bottom are the arts, everywhere on Earth. And in pretty much every system, too, there's a hierarchy within the arts. Art and music are normally given a higher status in schools than drama and dance. There isn't an education system on the planet that teaches dance every day to children the way we teach them mathematics. Why? Why not? I think this is rather important. I think maths is very important, but so is dance. Children dance all the time if they're allowed to. We all do. We all have bodies, don't we? Yeah. Did I miss a meeting? I mean, I think. <laughs> Truthfully, what happens is as children grow up, we start to educate them progressively from the waist up. And then we focus on their heads and slightly to one side. If you were to visit education as an alien and say, what's it for, public education, I think you'd have to conclude, if you look at the output, you know, who really succeeds by this? Who does everything they should? Who gets all the brownie points? You know, who are the winners? I think you'd have to conclude the whole purpose of public education throughout the world is to produce university professors. Isn't it? They're the people who come out the top. And I used to be one. So there. You know. <laughs> but, and I like university professors, but you know, we shouldn't hold them up as the, uh, the, the high watermark of all human achievement. They're just a form of life. You know, another form of life. But they're rather curious, and I say this out of affection for them. There's something curious about professors. In my experience, not all of them, but typically, they live in their heads. They live up there and slightly to one side. They're disembodied, you know, in a kind of literal way. You know, they, they look upon their body as a form of transport for their heads. <laughs> You know, it's... Don't they? It's a way of getting their head to meetings. <laughs> if you want real evidence of out-of-body experiences, by the way, get yourself along to a residential conference for senior academics and pop into the discotheque on the final night. <laughs> and <laughs> there you will see it. Grown men and women writhing uncontrollably. <laughs> off the beat. Wait until it ends so they can go home and write a paper about it. <laughs> now, our education system is predicated on the idea of academic ability. And there's a reason. The whole system was invented around the world. There were no public systems of education really before the 19th century. They all came into being to meet the needs of industrialism. So the hierarchy is rooted on two ideas. Number one, that the, the most useful subjects for work are at the top. So you were probably steered benignly away from things at school when you were a kid, Things you liked, on the ground, you would never get a job doing that. Is that right? Don't do music, you're not going to be a musician. Don't do art, you won't be an artist. Uh, benign advice. Now, profoundly mistaken. The whole world is engulfed in a revolution. And the second is academic ability, which has really come to dominate our view of intelligence, because the universities design the system in their image. If you think of it, the whole system of public education around the world is a protracted process of university entrance. And the consequence is that many highly talented, brilliant, created people think they're not. Because the thing they were good at at school wasn't valued or was actually stigmatized. And I think we can't afford to go on that way. In the next 30 years, according to UNESCO, more people worldwide will be graduating through education than since the beginning of history. More people. And it's the combination of all the things we've talked about, technology and its transformational effect on work, and demography and the huge explosion in population. Suddenly, degrees aren't worth anything. Isn't that true? When I was a student, if you had a degree, you had a job. If you didn't have a job, it's because you didn't want one. And I didn't want one, frankly, so... Um, but now, kids with, that, with degrees are often heading home uh, to carry on playing video games. Because you need an MA, where the previous job required a BA, and now you need a PhD for the other. It's a process of academic inflation, and it indicates the whole structure of education is shifting beneath our feet. We need to radically rethink our view of intelligence. We know three things about intelligence. One, it's diverse. We think about the world in all the ways that we experience it. We think visually, we think in sound, we think kinesthetically. Uh, we think in abstract terms, we think in movement. Secondly, intelligence is dynamic. If you look at the interactions of a human brain, as we heard yesterday from a number of presentations, intelligence is wonderfully interactive. The brain isn't divided into compartments. In fact, Creativity, which I define as the process of having original ideas that have value, 
more often than not, comes about through the interaction of different disciplinary ways of seeing things.